Welcome to Panda CSS, a built-time CSS in JS library that transforms the way you write styles in your front-end applications or websites. With Panda, you can write CSS styles directly in your JavaScript code without sacrificing performance or developer experience. Panda introduces the concepts of recipes, which are sets of styles that can be applied to a component. Another fantastic feature of Panda is its patterns. These are layout primitives that allow you to create robust and responsive layouts with ease. You can use them as functions or GSX elements. So whether you're working on a personal project, a client website, or even your next big startup, Panda will be your reliable companion to help you create visually stunning experiences. Panda can be used in two modes. The first mode is the CLI that extracts CSS when you use the panda-watch command. The second mode is the post CSS that leverages the post CSS runner and extracts CSS on demand without running any command. Let's use the post CSS approach to get started. First, install the panda CSS package by running the following command in your terminal. Next, we need to initialize panda in the post CSS method by running the command pmpm panda init p. You'll notice this generated a styled system directory, which is basically a set of functions to write styles. We've also generated two important files panda.config and postcss.config. For now, don't worry much about these files they will handle the configuration behind the scenes. Follow the next steps in your terminal, which are to create an index.css file in your project that contains at layer, reset, base, tokens, recipes, utilities. And then import the index.css file at the root of your project. This organizes your CSS styles into different layers, ensuring a clean and structured approach to styling. Perfect! Now that everything is in place, we are ready to start using Panda in our project. When you're working with CSS, it's essential to follow the dry principle. Lucky for us, recipes in Panda make dry CSS a reality. These recipes allow us to define styles once and we use them effortlessly throughout our project. If you need to make a style change or update, you only have to do it in one central place and all the components using that recipe will automatically reflect these changes. A recipe consists of four properties, the base styles, variants, compound variants, and default variants. Imagine you're creating a recipe for a button component. Start with the base styles, which define the fundamental look of the button. And then you add variants like visual and size. These variants allow you to choose different visual styles, such as solid or outline, and different sizes, such as small or large. But what if you want to create more advanced styles? That's where compound variants come in. Let's say you want a button with a small size, a primary color, and a special border. With compound variants, you can define the conditions that combine these styles together, creating a unique button that fits your specific needs. You can also set default values for your variants, ensuring that your button always has a particular style right out of the box. Previously, we created a recipe for buttons. Now it's time to put it in action. I've already inserted two button elements, one displaying click me and the other stating get started. To implement the recipe, invoke it as a function and pass in the objects that represent the recipe. In this case, visual is set to solid. For the second button, we follow the same process, but this time, visual is set to outline. And that's all there is to it. Behind the scenes, the recipe function developed by Panda processes this input it looks up the associated style properties defined in the recipe and applies them to the respective element or component. In 
In certain situations, you may need to convert your recipe into reusable components. Panda makes this possible. To enable the GSX feature for your chosen framework, navigate to the panda.config file and make the necessary adjustments. In this case, we are working with React, so we set the GSX framework to React. Next, execute the command pmpm panda codegen to automatically regenerate the code required for the GSX feature. At the top of your file, import styled from styled system slash GSX, and then proceed to define your component by utilizing the styled function. The styled function expects two arguments, the HTML element and the predefined recipe. Now, you've created your button component that you can use anywhere in your application. Patterns in Panda serve as the foundation for building robust and responsive layouts with ease. The beauty of using patterns lies in the flexibility they provide. You have the freedom to choose between working with functions or GSX elements based on your coding preferences. When using functions, you can directly invoke the patterns and pass the necessary parameters to define your desired layout. If you prefer working with GSX, Panda offers dedicated GSX elements for each pattern. Patterns are designed to handle common layout scenarios effectively. For example, the stack pattern allows you to create both vertical and horizontal stacks of elements. Panda provides a wide range of other patterns that we'll explore in detail shortly. The stack pattern allows you to create either a vertical or horizontal stack of elements. It provides a convenient way to group elements together while maintaining uniform spacing between them. To use stack as a function, import it from styled system slash patterns and pass the following properties to it. Direction, this gives the flex direction of the stack. By default, stack has a column direction, but you can set it to a row direction based on your use case. Gap is another property that defines the spacing between the elements inside the stack. Let's say we have these three divs and we want to stack them together. So we go in and we grab stack here. We give it a gap of six, which means 24 pixels. And here's what we have. H stack is a wrapper around the stack pattern that specifically sets the direction property to horizontal and vertically centers elements within it. So let's horizontally stack these divs. We grab our H stack pattern and we can give some spacing using the gap property. For this, let's maintain a gap of six, which implies 24 pixels. V stack is another wrapper around the stack pattern, but this time it sets the direction property to vertical. It also centers the elements horizontally within the container. From our previous example, we can easily stack these divs vertically and simply switch our H stack to V stack. The major difference between V stack and stack is that V stack centers elements horizontally. So there you have it. Now go ahead and explore stack, H stack, and V stack patterns. Like the name implies, container is used to constrain a content suite to a current breakpoint while centering it. It accepts a maximum width property that specifies the size of the container. Max width can take values like small, large, extra large, and so on. By default, Panda sets the max width of a container to 8XL, which is 1 for 40 pixels. The grid pattern is used to create a grid layout that organizes elements in columns and rows. To use grid, Specify the number of columns in the grid layout using the columns property and the spacing between each element in the grid using the gap property. The wrap pattern automatically wraps elements to a new row if there isn't enough space in the container. It accepts a gap property that sets the spacing between elements within it. Center is perfect for placing your content at the center of your container. It accepts an inline property, which is a Boolean value. 
This determines whether to use inline flex or flex for the container, giving you control over your layout. Next, let's move on to the circle pattern that allows us to create perfect circles effortlessly. Circle accepts a size property, which is really how big or small your circle should be. You can use sizing tokens or arbitrary values to achieve your desired size. Of course, you want to give your circle a background color, which you can do using the BG property. The square pattern works just like the circle pattern, but obviously it's used for creating squares. Let's turn our circle into a fine little square. That's about it. You can use any of these patterns as GSX elements, which we'll explore in the next video. In the previous videos, all the patterns we used were written as functions. In this video, we'll learn how to transform a panda pattern, originally used as a function, into a GSX component. To use the pattern as a GSX component, we first need to set the GSX framework property in our panda.config file. We are using React, so we set the GSX framework to React. This step is essential as it enables Panda to generate the files for GSX elements based on the framework we choose. Once we've configured the GSX framework property, we can use any pattern as a GSX element. All patterns can now be imported from the slash GSX entry point. At this point, it's important to note that the naming convention for the GSX element follows Pascal case. Remember our previous stack example? Let's use the GSX stack element for this. We import stack at the top of our file and then we use the stack component. Of course, we can then pass in our style props. Notice that everything stays exactly the same. If you're coming from the style props land, this is a great way to style and layout elements on your page. Now that we've installed and set up Panda in our project, let's explore how to use Panda CSS to build this testimonial card component. From the design, you'll notice there's a profile photo, name, social handle, and the actual testimonial. All of these are contained within a nice card that has some border, box shadow, and border radius. Let's build this out. Here's my Vit app already running. So I'll start by adding in the image tag for the profile photo. I'll give it the source and alt attributes. Also, I'll add in some width and height. This is what we have. From the design, we need to bring in the circle pattern to create a circle around the image. So I import circle from style system slash patterns and I add a div around the image. On the class name attributes, I call the circle pattern as a function. Now I pass the circle styles as an object. The first style is the size. I also set the overflow property to hidden. That's done, so let's move over to the next part in our design. We need to add in the name and social handle. So I create an enclosing div and inside it, I add an h2 tag that has the name and a p tag that has the handle. Based on the design, we notice the name should be bold and the handle should be a gray color. So let's add in these styles. We need to import the CSS function from style system slash CSS. This is the function that we use to write all our styles in Panda CSS. Next, we pass in the font weight and color to these text elements. Check out what we've built so far. The next thing is to place the profile photo and text side by side. We can do this by using the htag pattern. Create a div wrapper around both and call the htag pattern as a function. From the design, let's increase the spacing between these two elements. We can do this using the gap property and we set gap to 4. 
Great. Now let's add in the actual testimonial using the block quote element. I'm adding a font size of 17 pixels to match the design. Right now, you notice two things. The code stretches all through the screen. Don't worry about that, we'll fix it shortly. Also, we need to add spacing between the block code and the top div. Add a wrapping div and pass a stack pattern to it. Give the stack a gap of 4. Now let's move over to the actual card that wraps this element. We can get the styles for this from Figma. We grab the border styles, box shadow and border radius styles. Also, add a padding of 6 around the card. To constrain the width, let's give the card a maximum width of 388 pixels based on the design. Finally, let's center the card on our screen. To do this, Panda offers a center pattern. Wrap a div around the card and pass the center pattern as a function to it. Set the height to 100 VH. This is what we have. We can see it looks very sleek and matches our design. So go ahead and try Panda in your projects.